This is a video tutorial for the students in the Ethics 4 course in preparation for their final project. The first thing you need to do is find this template that will be linked on your wiki and then when you get to the template and you open up the document you need to make a copy of it as explained here in the box with the red instructions. The way that you make a copy is come into file and choose make a copy and select OK. It will copy the document for you. Then you need to change the title of the document and it's all explained right here. So it says rename this document by re replacing WIC with the first three letters of your last name and the first letter of your first name and then project outline and so you will do that by clicking the title here, remove copy of, and remove WIC. And so in my case it would be B-A-M-D and then ethics project. And I could take out the template and that would be fine and click OK. And now I have a copy of this original template. After I've read the instructions I can delete everything that's in red as it says right here. Make sure to delete all the instructions in red italics and the examples in blue but only do this after you have read through the entire template. And so what you need to do here is first of all enter what your topic is. And what's a topic is a general statement indicating what it is you're going to be researching. I've given you an example here in blue. Example, religious fears surrounding the end of the world. The next thing you need to fill in is a subject. So you'll see that the topic is a general area and the subject is a little bit more specific with a more narrow focus. And then the explanation still even more narrow that explains what it is you're going to be developing as ideas in your project. And then give it a title and the title is whichever you decide this is your own creative endeavor. Once you've indicated what your topic area and your subject and a little bit more specific as an explanation then you're going to divide your topic into three or more sections. And so here I've given you an idea. Say I'm taking the idea of the prediction of December 21st, 2012, the Mayan calendar. Fears and predictions around this winter solstice. Some people believe that it indicates the end of the world, other people not. And so I've got three subjects here or three sections. The first one is fears and predictions. The next one is the Mayan calendar in context in the historical, political and social context of that time. And then the last section would be the religious fears as smoke screens. Obviously a smoke screen is something that hides something and so that it's a fear that's actually hiding something else. So these are my three sections and each one of these sections, so up here you see fears and predictions and down here you see section one fears and predictions. Now in this section I'm going to divide it up even further and I'm going to be talking about some predictions, what people really believe and superstitions and social anxieties. If you look at the way that the numbers are detailing the outline you see a number one up here indicating this is the first section and 1.1 the first point I'm developing in this first section 1.2 what people really believe the second point I'm developing in this first section 1.3 superstitions and social anxieties the third point I'm developing in this first section and so follow my examples and continue all the way down this is the second section and the third section. Now you probably were not going to have more than three but 
In this way, following this outline, you will be able to detail a very long and very complicated paper when you get around to writing a longer paper later on in your academic career. And so, <clears throat> after you've outlined your topic in this way with your sections, your three main sections and three supporting points in each section, you're, need, you're going to need to talk about where you're getting your information and that's what we call a bibliography. And we're asking you to annotate a bibliography. And so what that means is you have to do more than just give a copy-paste URL of where you got your information. The first thing you need to do is you need to cite your sources and you're going to use either EasyBib and if you click on what's underlined here you will see that Google Docs gives you a link to that website, EasyBib or Citation Machine. I personally like EasyBib and I've shown my students how to use it. With EasyBib you actually even have a link to your own Google Docs and so that the citation that it gives you, it will copy paste that format right into a Google document in your account if you want. And this is what it looks like after you've gone through and you've answered the questions, it will give you a format that looks a little bit like this right here. And so if I remove the um, arrows, not the arrows, but the brackets in front of this uh, HTTP address, I will get the URL that links me directly to this NASA debunks 2012 apocalypse with new FAQs from this website, Read, White, Read Write Web. And so this is the format that you need to use. And the second thing you need to do in an annotated bibliography is you need to number them. So here you see I have a number one. And number them alphabetically. So if I had, say, an author whose name started with B, I would put Rowinski as the entry that followed the authors whose article started with B. So number them alphabetically. And then the third thing that we need you to do is to give a couple of sentences, a, a short description of what this source is. Is it a business source? Is it an education source? Or you could talk about why this source is important for your project and why you think this source is a trustworthy source that you can use. And here's a little hint. If you look for the About Us tab on a web page, it'll give you lots of information that will hopefully help you validate why this is a good site to use. And here's an example of what we would like you to write that gives a little descriptor of the source that you're using. You might have heard your teacher say to you to avoid sites like about.com and avoid using Wikipedia as a source that you use in your bibliography, but by all means use Wikipedia as an information source and make sure that you read the external links at the end of an article because those are going to be a an important source of lots of good information for where you can start looking. You should also consider using other search engines beyond Google and Sweet Search is my search engine of preference for the students because it will give you a really good uh, repertoire of sites that have been approved by researchers and teachers and so you don't have to worry so much about the validity the validity of the site that you're looking for. Then the final thing that we're asking you to do is to read this part down here and decide what design are you going to choose for your project. Is it going to be a standard research project so text with images and links and here you've got a maximum of 500, a maximum of 1000 words and we need you to put this up on the wiki or is it going to be more of a creative video style documentary and here you have an example of how you could do that over here just come over here and read this lots of good ideas here 
or is it going to be a recording of your PowerPoints and you can use free screen recording programs such as the one I'm using right now, Screencast-O-Matic or Jing or even Screener.com to help you record your screen as you are going through your slides that you've prepared. And so this is a pretty brief introduction into how to use this template so to get your ethics project outline done and done well and done on time. Don't forget that after you've gone through this document and you've read what you need to read, remember that you need to replace what's in red. So take it out, remove that. We don't need to see that. And also in blue, you're going to be removing that and you're going to be putting in your own text because we don't need to see our instructions. And if you have any more questions about this assignment, remember to see your teacher as quickly as possible so that you can do the best job and get your work done on time.